Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Maureen Agena, and I'm one of the facilitators of this training. Welcome to module one, which will be looking at harnessing the digital potential to accelerate agri entrepreneurship and use youth business growth. And module one focuses on agriculture in the digital age with um, understanding mainly the key elements and typology of uses of ICT for ag. ICT for ag basically means ICT for agriculture. So um, this course is organized by IDEP and its partners. In this first module, <clears throat> we'll give you an overview of the first module, which contains the key elements to familiarize yourself with the concepts around digital agriculture. To take full advantage of this course and learn more, you should read and the full course material available on this platform. So uh, when we look at the digitization of agriculture, there are multiple terminologies uh, designating the same. And these include among many others, agriculture digital, there's ICT for ag, and then there's digital for agriculture. And the definition when we look at digitization for agriculture, it's defined as the convergence of agriculture and information technologies to improve productivity and meet environmental and societal expectations throughout the value chain. So this is just a diagram illustrating that value chain and showing some of the infographs relating to digital for agriculture. And so you can just study it in detail and try to make sense of it. So uh, there's another diagram here trying to show us the breakdown across the value chain. When you look at digital advisory, uh, financial services, when you look at procurement, e-commerce and smart farming. So critically to digest it also from the point of um, distribution globally across the world and the number of services uh, based on the key uh, that is availed below uh, in terms of percentages and uh, when you look at the smart farming and look at Africa, the continent that we are focusing on the most, we just um, see that a lot of the um, services offered are actually in line with smart farming, which is uh, the color red. So again, just look into detail and try to digest it and um, break it down. So agriculture and uh, digital transformation strategy in Africa. Uh, digital for agriculture is one of the six pillars of the continent's digital transformational agenda. And when we, took, when we look at the continent, we are looking at the um, continental body, which is the African Union. And a lot of these um, policies uh, emerge from the African Union that are adopted by different other organizations. And again, this diagram clearly illustrates uh, the cross-cutting themes and then the critical sectors to drive this kind of transformation. And as you can see, there's education, there's health, there's trade, there's finance and agriculture is somewhere just before digital governance. And then lastly, the foundation pillars. And some of those include an enabling environment from within our governments and then policy and regulation, but also digital infrastructure because that's what drives um, this uh, digital for agriculture. Then the skills and the human capacity and that's where human capital development comes in. Um, the institutions that try to build this human capital development like universities and TVETs. And finally, the digital innovation and entrepreneurship. So there has to be an entrepreneurial aspect to this for digital for agriculture to thrive. And so we'll look at also the challenges and the opportunities that um, digital for agriculture gave us. So um, some of the recommendations that come from this continental um, body, which is the African Union, that we, uh, whose six pillars we are looking at, uh, creating a conducive environment to, to foster the development of digital agriculture. And you can see under that, of course, there's, there, are, there are so many ways in trying to create that conducive environment. 
first improving the rural digital infrastructure, fostering competition in telecoms to boost rural coverage and lower costs. So the lower the costs, the more the access. So those are some of the ways of creating a conducive environment, but also developing digital agri-finance services. For example, the e-voucher, that's the electronic vouchers for direct benefit transfers and incentives for farmers. And this is in a way to try and protect and safeguard the farmers from being cheated or from buying um, count, uh, uh, fake seeds or fake inputs. So when you look, use the e-voucher, they just redeem. And then of course, um, improving access to finance. We all know that on the continent, oftentimes people innovate, but they don't scale up those innovations. They don't reach the markets. They don't reach the shelves of supermarkets. So one of the ways to create this conducive environment is to improve that access to finance in terms of soft loans, in terms of uh, um, easy transactions and all that. And then the second recommendation is to provide farmers with reliable marketing information that helps them reach their markets more effectively at lower costs and with wider opportunities. And I think this is extremely important because then when farmers know that they have a market, it becomes easy for them to produce. So that market information is critical in enabling um, digital agriculture. So how is this going to be done? How are farmers going to be enabled to receive this market information? One is by supporting agricultural platforms. For example, uh, digital farmer registries, digital marketing platforms, and uh, agricultural observatories, which is very critical. So that is a, a database, but also a community of practice. And then enhancing digital skills and literacy. So this is very critical because um, you can't work on the assumption that everyone is digitally literate. They have to be trained and constantly retrained. And the training has to be really targeted depending on the stages and phases of these farmers. And then um, empowering women in agriculture and using ICTs, uh, that's no brainer. We know that in uh, agricultural productivity and across the entire value chain, women play a very key role so empowering them is actually empowering farmers across um, the value chain. And the third recommendation is promote the deployment of digital solutions in agriculture. So first we looked at creating a conducive environment, then providing re reliable market information, and finally promoting the deployment of these digital solutions. And of course, uh, there are ways in which this can be done. Of course, implementing the digital solutions to schedule sprinkler irrigation systems and enhance the quality and productivity of land and eventually increase farmers input. And of course, deploying e-agriculture information systems with content such as on health, nutrition, education, because agriculture content is not just agricultural content. It has a nutritional aspect to it. It has a health aspect to it. It has an educational aspect to it, it has a business aspect to it. So I think it's very important to um, deploy that, those information systems. And some of the ways, of course, using, for instance, mobile telephony for sending and saving money. And for countries, for instance, in Sub-Saharan -Sub Africa, you're very conversant with the mobile money platforms um, across, you know, M-Pesa, that's for really Kenya, and then mobile money in countries like Uganda. So that's a very easy way. Then of course, implementing traceability solutions to be able to respond to the quality standard requirements and help large buyer trucks manage pay and reward small producers. Traceability is important. Beyond enabling this, um, these business transactions, it's also important you know, to check and follow up with these uh, farmers who are involved. So um, when we look at e-agriculture um, in terms of the Food and Agriculture Organization and then the ITU uh, guide, that's the International Telecommunication Union. So um, with support from their partners, both the institutions have developed the Digital Agriculture Strategy Guide to help countries develop their national digital agriculture strategies and plans. And I think this is very important um, to 
create uh, this enabling environment. So how they have done this has been in three parts. And the first part was to establish a national e-agriculture vision, then develop a national e-agriculture action plan, and then monitor and evaluate the implementation of the strategy. So the strategy is a guide, uh, is a guide framework to help countries shape their national air agriculture strategies. So the assumption is a lot of these countries have already have air agriculture strategies. And so this, this one that is um, developed by FAO and uh, ITU is just to um, build on to what already exists. And this is um, to help them identify and develop sustainable services and solutions based on the use of information and communication technologies in agriculture. So I hope as you go on with this course, you, you'll try and check within your own countries if you have national e-agriculture strategies. Only then will this uh, strategy that was developed by FAO and uh, ITU in partnership with other partners will make sense. So um, this is the vision for digital for agriculture. So it describes a um, national agricultural system that has been enabled by e-agriculture. And this is for each country. And then shows how e-agriculture will be used to address the priorities and challenges of the agricultural systems. So these challenges are identified and then this um, vision for digital for agriculture shows how those challenges will be addressed. And then it answers the questions of that future state of agriculture, the country envisions, and how e agriculture will help get there. So the whole point is about digitizing agriculture, really, because agriculture has existed and continues to exist, but how its um, its application and use is made easier for the farmers, for the, for the practitioners across the value chain is what the digital aspect uh, helps with. Then um, some of the results um, envisioned is achieving uh, agricultural goals and overcoming existing challenges. That is when you apply the digital for agriculture. And then positive changes and impact on the lives of the stakeholders involved in the agricultural sector. Obviously, this, if you make people's business transactions easy, people can transact on their mobile phones, people can have access to market information. It's very evident that um, these, these are the, you'll positively impact on their lives and change them. And then, of course, improved investment potential in the agricultural sector. When processes are smooth and seamless, people are more attracted to invest in those seamless processes. And an example is the e-voucher, the electronic voucher. If farmers can redeem um, authentic seeds, for instance, or authentic fertilizers, you know, that means the yield is good, the production is good, the, the end result is generally good. So you, it, it encourages governments and private sector to invest more in the agriculture sector. And of course, the last one is uh, reducing individual and institutional risks to farming communities. And this is true in a sense that if I, if I know, for instance, market information, if I have, say, an electronic cropping calendar, if I know whether information on whether I receive it in a timely manner and it's relevant, then the risks are reduced so much that, um, to me as an individual and to a community as a whole, and by extension to the entire country. So there are some components definitely required to achieve this vision of digital for agriculture. To achieve these results, something has to be, um, like something has to be put in place, some things have to work. And some of those required components are leadership and governance. The political will is very important. The government has to prioritize agriculture, but it also has to prioritize digital uh, technologies. And um, the pandemic has shown us that really digital is the way to go. So there has to be good political will. The infrastructure has to be there. If the road network is not good, if the, if the telecom companies don't have network, then it's of no use. 
So infrastructure in terms of uh, roads, in terms of uh, market spaces, in terms of connectivity, um, that is a, very, is a required component for this vision to be achieved and then standards and interoperability. So these standards are very important, generally uh, for farmers, but also, for instance, across regions, you know, like these trade policies, um, the, the, the standards in terms of agriculture products, you know, and, um, and the fact that, you know, they, can, they cut across, you know, if, for instance, you're within a region, if you're in ECOWAS, if you're in uh, East African community, uh, if you're in SADAC, how do, how, how, how do those standards apply to each one of us in our countries and are they favorable? And then um, the next requirement is content, knowledge management and sharing. The heartbeat of any ICT, uh, innovation or any digital innovation is content and content can only add value when um, it's shared and when it's understood and that process of sharing and understanding content and replicating it and you know disseminating it is the whole is where knowledge management comes in because that's where you learn best practices that's where you share and um, that's where you, you know, you, 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 you pick up new skills and new knowledge. So it's very important. You have to create content, but uh, it also has to be managed. And of course, strategy and investment, like I said, I mean, governments have to invest heavily, individuals have to invest. And for governments, like we mentioned earlier, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of human capital development, in terms of research and development, that's the only way. Uh, the vision can be achieved. So human capital development is very key. Training researchers, um, uh, having uh, national strategies on how you move forward, let's say for ICT, for agriculture. Then of course, services and applications. And I don't know how it is in each of your countries, but you know, at the helm of every country you have, for instance, a communications commission, an IT commission, or an IT authority. So some of these things have to be made available. Let's say if you're sending information to farmers and you use USSD and you have to be cleared and has to be approved. Those are some of the services and applications, okay? Um, what does it cost you to host websites? How is the internet in the, in the region or in the country? And then next um, is the workforce and capacity development, which I talked about in terms of human capital development. You need skilled labor to do this. And finally, legislation, policy and compliance. And these are very critical. We've talked about them. These come in on the aspect of leadership. Without those, nothing much can be done. So um, the action plan objective is to enable governments to, first of all, identify all activities and details on how they should be governed, funded and coordinated to ensure that results are achieved at the national, state and local levels. And number two, to identify key stakeholders and engage effectively with them in the design, implementation and sustainability of activities. I think these are both very, very important. Of course, the first one is more on the government side, like really very high level. But the second one is very key. It's, the, it's almost the heartbeat of the success of this guide because the, the stakeholders play a very critical role in um, making this possible, making it a success because they have to give input. They're the active users of these systems and they are the consumers of the information on these systems. So um, there's a, an action plan development um, process verification. And there were 10 points that were considered and uh, you can look through them very quickly. Um, the feasibility of the implementation of this guide, the interdependence between activities, um, the availability of champions and buy-in from key stakeholders so first of all, maybe just to take you back a bit, feasibility, is it possible? Is it necessary? Is it doable? Is it achievable? So you just have to, that, that's, that was one of the things that were considered. 
once that was cleared that it's achievable, it's needed, it's necessary, then uh, the interdependence between activities. If you're looking at agriculture, like I said, agriculture is not just uh, agriculture in the sense of farming. You have apiculture, you have aquaculture, you have um, research, you know, so you have nutrition. So how do all these interlink? And then, of course, the availability of champions and buying from key stakeholders. We are looking at digital for agriculture. We definitely have champions on the continent. We have people who are innovating each and every day. So those ones are available. But what about the buying from the private sector, from the government and all that? And then the fourth was the level of impact of each activity on strategic outcomes and recommendations. So activities were taken, um, were carried out and then the impact was um, measured. And so that impact uh, informed uh, this action plan development. And uh, resource requirements, that's human, financial, logistical, and technical. I, I spoke about those, the, the human capital, those are researchers, those are scientists, those are agriculturalists, agronomists, and all that. The financial part of it, um, in terms of the availability of the funds, first from the government, but also from uh, within the stakeholders. And then, of course, the logistic and the technical, technical in terms of infrastructure, telecoms, and all that. Then uh, the reason, reasonableness of the schedule. Um, is, it, is it achievable within that time frame? And then the level of stakeholder readiness, are they ready to take it on? I mean, they are very self-explanatory. And then I spoke about uh, infrastructure previously the enabling environment, and then the risks related to the activity. So that's the 10 action, the action plan development process verification for the FAO ITU guide. So uh, this is an implementation strategy of monitoring and evaluation. It's a framework for analyzing value chains and supporting digital interventions in agriculture, particularly the digitization of agricultural procurement payments, which is a very critical um, aspect. So the objective of this um, value chain assessment tool is to provide. So this um, tool is primarily aimed at digital financial service providers seeking to develop a better rural growth strategy, including mobile operators and the non-ORM mobile money providers. So the tool would also be used for agri-tech companies and other digital agriculture players working to digitize the last mile. So this value chain assessment tool is just an example of um, one of those uh, uh, implementation strategies under monitoring and evaluation. So uh, the country profiles for digital agriculture to help strengthen agricultural transformation and accelerate economic growth. And here we are told that the Africa Development Bank, FAO, and um, the CGR, that's the International Center for Biodiversity Alliance and Big Data and Agriculture Platforms, created country prof profiles for agriculture digital technology to help boost agricultural transformation and accelerate economic growth. And we can see there are examples for South Africa, for Ivory Coast, and for Rwanda. So please just take time to click those links and try to read those strategies. That's for South Africa, Cote d'Ivoire, and uh, Rwanda. Thank you very much for listening. We look forward to knowing and discussing with you about your experience in digital agriculture through this online forum. Please feel free to ask questions about this presentation or the documentation provided. We are here to help you deepen your understanding and we'll do everything in our power to ensure that you are successful in the course. Thank you very much.